Okay, guys. Um, I guess we're just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, today, uh, in the Commonwealth Virtual Study Group, we're going to be discussing and covering um, Chapter 22, essentially, which is, covers the loop macro inside Common Lisp, Chapter 22 of um, Practical Common Lisp. I'm your host, uh, Ram Vedam. Uh, to get things started here, I thought I'd just give you a bit of an agenda that we're going to cover, as, as I do every week. Um, primarily, I would like to um, start by at least talking about what the use case really was that brought about um, Loop. And this is based on my own initial exploration on this. Um, one of the things that's commonly done when people talk about iteration patterns is is, is what sort of were the basis for some of the design constructs for a particular type of iteration pattern, whether it be um, iterators that were designed for object-oriented languages or um, the loop macro itself. So we're going to discuss that a little bit. We're going to also talk about, obviously, a good portion of the features of loop. There are a couple of things that are related to loop that I myself have never actually touched. Um, during my day-to-day um, -day usage. Others on um, the chat may have, so hopefully when we get to those, um, we'll have some good discussion on it. And of course, um, uh, we'll deconstruct the loop macro because the macro is somewhat fairly complex. This isn't like your typical macros that we've been using up until now. Uh, primarily, it implements a fairly substantial language on top of um, common lisp for iteration and it all goes back to what the original sort of constructs were when um, the designers created the loop language what they ultimately were they were trying to um, solve along the way we'll see quite a few examples of loop iteration hopefully um, these will cover most of the day-to-day -day usage of the loop macro and you will be able to uh, leverage these as you guys are, you know, developing your own list programs and or applications. As usual, I have checked in this code um, into the Atlanta FP uh, Git repository, which you can actually go and grab from uh, by going to https uh, github.com slash Atlanta FP. Uh, I think it's called CL Study Group, and it will. Uh, you should be able to grab uh, our examples uh, for not just today's session, but all sessions. Um, to get things started a little bit, I want to at least talk about iteration in general, just to sort of set the stage of why um, I understand some of the design goals of, of the loop macro in general. If you look at any large-scale program, regardless of Lisp, let's just say Python, Ruby, um, C++, whatever, you end up realizing that loop is a very common, um, commonly used um, thing. You'll always be iterating through something, whether it be uh, collections, you'd be uh, going through a single collection, trying to do some sort of aggregate analysis, whether it be summing, um, finding the maximum or minimum, uh, being able to uh, group them, filtering out certain things, and so on. Uh, additionally, some things that were built on top of this is, is random access patterns. That is, if you have a collection and you want to uh, grab every other item or every third item or so on, you'd be, want to be able to uh, just specify some sort of step parameter into whatever language that you're using so that it can recognize how to actually move along the collection a particular way so that you can actually go and execute arbitrary code on the items that you want to execute on without having to do an additional step of copying over everything into a secondary data structure and then doing whatever execution that you want to. Uh, this is commonly done in any sort of uh, large program, as I mentioned. And uh, if you look through it, all the loops that you've ever probably written, there are certain common patterns that are uh, done uh, to while you're actually accessing the collection itself and um, iterating through that collection. And what the designers were trying to 
essentially accomplish is, is create a one sort of one solution fits all sort of uh, language that allows you to define any sort of general iteration construct. This is in addition to some of the already existing constructs that were available in common lists that is uh, do, do times, and do lists, and we will cover some of those same use cases and somewhat declaratively, and I say somewhat because um, some people can use the wrong uh, uh, quasi-English keyword inside their loop macro, but because it's a synonym of an existing one, um, it will still execute and may even give you what you want, but when you read it, it doesn't actually read like normal English. Um, but we will see that there are quite a few um, uh, constructs that have a, uh, an English present participle that is an ing form uh, for you to uh, specify a particular operation. And um, we'll see that uh, in those cases, uh, they, uh, the execution will be equivalent to the more uh, uh, command-based uh, syntax that, that is available inside the language. Additionally, you can uh, use loop to, you know, step through variables numerically. That is, you know, you can increment a simple loop. Like, think of a for loop in, in your common language of choice and uh, being able to step through it in a particular way by, you know, printing out any even numbers or only, you know, increment by three or increment by five or so on. You can do that directly through loop. Also, you can go through all your various um, data structures. We will touch a little bit more on this specifically because there is a uh, um, difference when you're iterating through list and vectors that um, when we get to that, I will show you uh, what, what, why that, that's the case. Um, you can perform aggregate operations. There are a certain set of operations that you can do for um, aggregating your, your results. Primarily things like, you know, collecting your items, uh, counting through the number of items, and doing minimization, summation, and so forth. Uh, you can also decide, you know, how to terminate the loop. There are different, different ways of actually doing that. Of course, any loop construct without being able to execute arbitrary list expressions will be a little kind of... Um, useless, so um, you can also arbitrarily execute list expressions. Uh, if you need to do things um, like, you know, have intermediate values, uh, sort of like in the situation of like printing out partial sums and so forth, uh, list provides you the ability to do that by creating local variables into the loop, like a let variable. And uh, you can run special code to execute prior to running the actual loop itself and after it and we'll touch base on that. The general structure of the loop macro is basically this. Uh, you have the loop keyword, of course. You have this optional naming, and this is particularly useful if you're doing certain things for conditional execution. We'll see some examples where we can essentially spit out from an outer loop by having a label uh, when a particular condition actually gets uh, executed. You have certain variable clauses, um, and then, of course, this one or more main clauses is based on um, whether or not you're using do or return, and um, uh, those are um, what are called ec un unconditional execution um, clauses inside the loop mini language. So let's start with a very basic situation here, okay, which is just counting, okay, being able to loop through a a range of values um, and uh, increment a particular variable by a particular amount and um, just printing it out. Okay, so in this example here, um, I'm just, you know, printing out the first 10, 10, uh, 10 digits, actually, the, from the range from 0 to 10. So really, it's the first 11 digits counting at 0. Uh, a couple of things you you will notice. The most straightforward way of actually doing this is just simply doing loop start four. This four is basically the um, initial value, the, the the variable you're going to be incrementing on. Um, from is a keyword that allows you to specify initial value for i, 
and um, two is the upper bound. It's called a stopping variable inside the common list Piper's spec. And then you can actually run a sequence of commands. In this case, we're only running one. And that is, te you're telling loop that you're actually executing that by uh, calling do. And what Yeah. Yes, and I will show an example of that. <laughs> uh, it's like the third example. The reason why I'm bringing up the from is 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 in particular for incrementally. Is 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 um, yeah, it reads better. Right. And that's a very good point. Um, there are default values for incremental um stepping. Um, has Michael Fiano pointed out. Um, and that is actually starting at zero is the, the specific one. If you wanted to start from a different value, you have to obviously specify that by providing a from clause. So like here, if we change it from fun to five, you'll, you'll see the initial value has been changed. Of course, you do not have to actually use from, you can actually use um, what's called up to, um, and it will, or to, and it will assume that the initial value for i is, um, is zero and then increment through it. One thing I do want to point out is instead of for, there is a synonym for for. You could also use as. I've seen this in, um, in some existing Lisp code bases. Um, and honestly, if you're asking which one is better for variable declaration, I don't have a preference. Um, some cases it reads better to use add as other cases, it reads better to use for. Um, it really depends on um, what you're trying to define in your computation. Uh, finally, um, when you're using up to or to or um, for defining the spec specified bounds, um, obviously from is optional. You can also um, uh, do a, what's called a below keyword, which is also specifying an upper bound. So as long as i is strictly less than this upper bound, it will you know execute this uh, the the statements that are specified by do. So in this example here, same thing. It's it's spitting out zero through ten, and because we're using zero's implicit initial value, it'll just keep incrementing one until it hits eleven and, and spits out exits the loop and then um, prints out each value along the way. Uh, obviously, just like before, you don't have to um, specify uh, from, but you, can, you could specify with a different value, as we can see here. You could do, you could do um, also uh, something like repeat. Um, repeat allows you to run a particular execution multiple times. And um, I wanted to show this ahead of time, just this, this concept, just because um, I'm trying to sort of like illustrate. There are multiple ways of obviously writing this, this loop, just like in any other language, but with loop, there are multiple declarative ways. And honestly, it really depends on what you're defining in terms of the declarative computation as to what makes most, the most sense. Um, Honest, it, for example, if you're doing something like, you know, uh, from 0 to 10, like in this example, this is more familiar to anybody coming from an existing programming language like Python or C or C++. Repeat 10 times. Um, there are existing languages like Ada or Pascal that has a repeat keyword that allows you to, you know, run certain thing a certain number of times. And I'm talking about repeat a number of times, not like repeat until, which um, existing languages do have, but that's more like a do while um, situation. But here in this example, where loop is saying run this essentially um, uh, up to 11. So this is equivalent to um, the below 11 case. So it, Specifically, if you want to see what the exact equivalent is, is this is exactly equivalent to you doing below 11, dot, 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 you know, where you specify an existing number of forms. But um, what we're doing here is, is our initialization starts out with a variable called i equals zero, 
and then for each step it'll increment it one one time and then runs um, this final print form here so if we run this obviously you'll see it'll also do print um, 0 to 10 that's not all <laughs> I wouldn't recommend you doing this. You can also obviously reference variables outside the loop macro, like in this case, to essentially do the same thing as the above um, uh, code. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to do that, do do times. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> if you're going to go through this much trouble, to create this code. <laughs> Just go. And when you have to, you may want to <laughs> go ahead and do do times. Um, yeah, sure. Right. Honestly, if you're at, if, yeah, it's a 50 50 slot. I think in historical ba code bases, um, you will see the um, it not mentioned as keywords. Um, uh, some of the older co code bases that are that are out that if you find them, that I, I certainly have seen. I think McClim, for example, has lo some loops that don't use the keywords, um, but a lot of newer ones have adopted this style. Um, me personally, I like this style just because. Um, as you pointed out, it does um, sort of separate what I would consider the syntax of the loop mini language from the rest, and you'll be able to know what something when something is a keyword in loop mini language and when something is not. Um, and uh, for all my examples here, uh, they I've 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 used that. I do know that the book does not use it. Um, but you can, and it's really, I guess, a matter of style. But if you ask for my recommendation, I personally like this style just because it does expose the loop syntax. And you'll know when you made a mistake by looking at it. Then you have to, instead of being careful, if you had like a bunch of like variables, especially, this becomes a little unwieldy in terms of reading. <laughs> so I almost end up, always end up, you know, going through and adding the colon so I can actually debug a particular statement. But that's just me. Um, it, um, the stuff that we talked about incrementing, decrementing has a spec. Um, you almost always have to um, use a from or down from variable to specify an initial value. Loop does not uh, know where to start from when you're doing a, um, a decrementing loop for numerical collections. Um, so, uh, these examples here essentially is doing the reverse of what I was showing earlier. You could use from, from down to, you could use from above. Above basically means as long as it's greater than it'll keep iterating through. Uh, you can also use for, uh, down from and to, which essentially is the same thing too. And, <laughs> you, and I'm showing you all the combinations just so that you guys can understand that there are multiple synonyms for this and it's really, um, <laughs> there are a lot of there are a lot of synonyms here, and and I do I do understand that for some folks that this is, um, but if you if you want me to like really like uh, print out 
there's there's to up to and down to and then there's from down from I don't think there's an up from there might be uh, there might be a uh, Pretty sure that there was an up from when I when I last checked. I was reading this earlier before. Yeah, there is an up from. You can do up from too as well. Uh, I missed one of those examples here. I'm sure you could find an example of up from uh, in um, in in the common list Piper spec. Uh, but uh, I just did most of the common ones that I'm familiar with um, here for the sake of example. And of course, you know, we could do repeat. And we could do the dumb one where you should do <laughs> you should do something else other than if you're gonna do this, there's a better way of doing this uh, this let form instead of uh, writing this code. Yeah. So. Let's start with um, iterating over lists because iterating over lists are a little bit more interesting. Like we, I just showed you some simple examples here. Do do is basically your unconditional execution, and what that means is is you can. This allows you to run multiple statements. This do allows you to run multiple statements in sequence of each other, and you can think of this as. Um, the equivalent of doing a prog n, um, it creates essentially in, inside a, a, a um, an implicit prog n uh, to um, uh, run these uh, these forms in sequence when it actually gets executed. So lists for our, for the examples here, I went ahead and created an example list here that we'll be iterating through. Um, when you're iterating through a list, uh, there's two things that you need to consider. Um, one is, is are you iterating through the values or are you iterating through the cells themselves? Um, and I'll show you why. Uh, when you're iterating through the values, um, you could do what's called a for in statement. So for each item in this list data structure, do a set of sequences. So like if we go ahead and, you know, print out every item in this list or do certain things in this list, we can go ahead and, um, you know, print this uh, item out um, by just simply uh, doing a for in. It'll grab the, for the current value and it'll execute the code and then move on to the next iteration. We don't need to care about how this iteration works. Um, additionally, uh, you could pass on how a uh, how we want to iterate um, through a particular list. Like in a normal, um, you know, uh, common list uh, code, like uh, when we were talking about uh, iterating between um, uh, numeric values, you could have done, you know, like the step size, and this uh, will allow you to, you know increment by a specific step value. This is the same idea here. We can actually specify a lambda to loop to say, okay, by the way, this is how I want you to iterate to the next to the next item. So in this example, I'm using kdr, <laughs> if I pronounced it right, <laughs> to essentially grab um, every other item. So if we go through this and execute this, this will always, pr this will print every other item. So it'll skip two, it'll skip four, it'll skip six, it'll skip eight, and so on. Um, if you're doing con cells, that is, if you're iterating through con cells inside of a list, well, then you're you'd want to use uh, the on statement. The on essentially grabs a particular con cell and then prints it out. So, like, if we run this piece of code on our, our simple list, you'll see that it will first print out the entire list, then it will skip, it'll print out the rest of the list and it'll keep on printing out the, the kidder of the, of the previous items as it goes on um, and until we hit the final um, kidder, which is um, 10, and then you'll get the empty list. You could...
Uh, I did not write an example for property list, but I could certainly do so. Um. <laughs> You mean key key value like this? Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I do I do a different example for property lists. Um, I do that when we talk about destructuring values. Um, it's later on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. But that's an excellent use case that we should bring up again um, um, uh, later on uh, when we touch that. Um, same idea with um, uh, uh, the on statement. Uh, folks, if you want to specify your own, you know, iterate iteration construct to d tell loop how you want to iterate through a particular collection, when you use the on statement, the by keyword can take a lambda that will inform um, the the loop macro how to iterate to the next item. So in this example here, this will do the same thing as we did before, except you will now see that it's skipping every other item. Um, so, um, Kidder. So before we had, if you notice here in this example, we printed out two, three, four. We skipped its um, rest, and we now only printed out this guy. And we do the same thing the, the, for um, every other item in the in the list. Vectors are a special beast um, in common Lisp, and I wanted to touch base on that for the loop keyword. Um, from my reading, and I don't know if others have, um, and Michael Fiano, you can you can help me if um, uh, if if you know more about this. But my understanding is is from my reading, um, practical common list actually at least explains it in the footnotes. Um, for vector objects, uh, because it's contiguous, it's contiguous. They can do more optimizations behind the scenes to actually go through and efficiently iterate through that collection, and since it doesn't have the type information um, at uh, compile time, and loop is a macro that runs at compile time, folks, um, they needed to add essentially a keyword to efficiently recognize, oh, I'm using a vector in this case. The keyword is essentially hinting at what the type is of the collection that they're iterating through. And they added a separate keyword to efficiently iterate through vectors. And this is why the across keyword is used when you're iterating through vectors and you're not using in or on. Is that is that is that correct? Is there any more like to that other than what I just uh, mentioned? Okay. Interesting. So, did... oh, geez. Okay. So, folks, just saying, we're going to touch. <laughs> right. So, we're we're touching base on one thing that will immediately become apparent as we go more along into this. Um, a loop has a lot of this baked in, but if one wanted to extend. The, the loop language, one cannot. There is no, if um, at least as far as I know, it might be implementation specific, and that means you're dealing with portability issues if you're trying to write cross list code. There's no portable way of extending the loop macro to do additional generic generic um, iteration constructs like this, like or creating you know uh, new iteration constructs. Um, but that's the reason why we'll we'll touch base on that more because um, that becomes um, the background for a new package that is sort of becoming popular recently, and that's the iterate package. Finally, when you're dealing with strings, strings are considered like vectors or vectors or chairs. You'd use a cross and not actually um, in. Uh, I didn't it didn't work when I when I tried doing this, and I ended up realizing it's because it's a vector of characters, not a not a, a list of characters. So you see in this example. What I did is, is I took each individual character and I threw it into a list separately and I collected it and I return, I return it. As you use um, 
loop, you know, more frequently. Uh, some of these common data structure idioms will become second nature almost. Um, there are, I will say, uh, right now, um, especially when we get started on, um, you know, iterating through hash tables and such, be consistent. Um, there are a lot of synonyms here. I know that I'm going to show you some examples of synonyms here when we start with the hash table. But whatever you pick, just be consistent across your things because otherwise <laughs> it could get confusing over time. And we'll see an example of this as we go and loop through hash tables because I've actually used a lot of the, um, the keywords um, for the hash table for, for the sake of example. So iterating through a hash table and iterating through a package first off, they essentially follow the same structure. All right. And that is loop for variable being, and you can use either da or each, you can choose um, whichever you want, um, from some set of things inside whether or not uh, um, a, a hash table or a package. Um, the difference is, is, is dependent upon what things are going to be. What I mean by uh, things is this variable here, things. And um, what uh, and whether or not you're actually um, iterating through a hash table or iterating through a package. Uh, for a quick overview, for hash table specifically, you would use either hash key or value. And then, if you want to you iter if you're you know if you're iterating through values of the hash table and you want the key subsequently, you can use an optional using subclause to say, I also want the hash key for this particular hash value I'm looking at. And we'll see an example of this um, where I essentially reverse um, and iterate through both the keys and values of a given hash table, as you see here. For packages, and <laughs> there's multiple things that you can iterate through. And depending upon what you're iterating through, you'll get a, a different subset of the symbols that are available. And I have some examples on, on that. but. Finally, unlike hash table, it doesn't have a using subclause because there isn't multiple, you're not going through a, a complicated data structure. You're actually going through essentially a list of symbols um, in the package iteration. So there's no using subclause for packages. So for our example here for hash table, I've created a, a student age table, all right? Um, it is a, a table that basically holds people's name, has, their, has a string key, and their value is, a, is, a, is just a number. And I just added, you know, let's say I added, you know, three people into this, into this hash table. Commonly used if you have, you know, a bunch of common eliminated vari variables, you could think of creating complex structures for these guys and creating a simple dictionary for that. Well, if we're iterating through and we're going to base it on the key, the hash key, well, we could just simply do this, which is um, for each, for k being each hash key of this hash table and using the, sub, the corresponding value for that given key value pair, we're just going to go ahead and print this out. So when we print it out, you notice that we're actually grabbing each key, each value pair and just, you know, outputting it one after the other. You can also use, instead of of, you can use in as well, and it gives you the same result. So again, it's a matter of preference as to what you're, what you're trying to do. Um, some folks I've seen, um, because they're using for item in, just so that they don't have to, you know, constantly think about, you know, the other synonym, uh, they just use in everywhere. It's really a matter of, um, matter of preference has to and style and I really emphasize whatever you use be consistent so that that way the code base is easier to read uh, the same thing goes for hash value we can go reverse in this example here instead of iterating on hash keys I'm iterating on hash values and you'll see that when I iterate through it I get the same results as iterating on hash keys so they're both reversible it, it, it just it just works any questions on iterating through hash tables? I mean, it really is pretty s s basic once you understand the structure.
Go ahead. You can also use map hash. I wasn't going to recommend. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I, I, I you're, you're absolutely right. You can. Um, I, I think you're, you're, you're certainly right. But the thing where map ha where this becomes useful is, is, um, if you need one or the other, I don't think map hash allows you to pick just map on keys other, unless you have, you ignore the key that the, the V in your, in your, in your code, right? can't I don't think you can write map hash you right gotcha right so it, 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 it gives you warning in the compiler and if you need one or the other loop is just easier so you can avoid the warnings um, but uh, if you need both map hash is most certainly the the recommended approach to actually iterating through the, the hash table. Um, finally, um, for the example of packages, I wanted to use our hello as the package from the last couple of weeks because it really shows off, you know, what what is available, what is not available. Now, I'm going to start backwards here, even though I, I have it, you know, symbol, present symbols, and so on. External symbols, external symbols, Present symbol, present symbols, and symbols and symbol symbol and symbols are essentially synonyms of each other. So if you use either or, they get the same output. So if you use symbol or symbols, you'll get the same result as you if you use external symbol and external symbols. So what do each of these do? Well, external symbols is essentially what your interface is. So if you if you know a package but you don't know what its interface is, you can use the loop keyword. To the loop macro to iterate through the package on its external symbols and get all the symbols that are externally um, exported by um, this particular package. So if you need to find a particular symbol or see if a particular symbol is in a package, you could certainly use find symbol and all the queries around it. But if you want to display what the exact interface is, instead of trying to see if something exists, you can also use this to actually go through these the package and figure out what the external interface is. In Bolt, external symbol and external symbols print the same thing, which is the set of symbols that are that are exported by that particular package. Present is that a, a part of the standard? Okay, there is. Okay, I just didn't. I didn't realize that. Okay, cool. Then I just learned something today. <laughs> All right. So if we do this, and I'm assuming you specify that, and then do print sim. Okay, it does the same thing. All right. Um, present symbol and present symbols, as I understand it, and I wanted to make sure I understood this, and I'm sure that. Uh, these are all the symbols that are actually used by a particular package, which is, so like in this, it prints all the symbols that are available internally if you switch into that package. Is that, is that right? Like, I know that these guys aren't, I know some function is, is the only thing that's exported, but um, the other guys, I, I don't know where, where they were defined inside that, um, <laughs> that symbol. So I was, I was just kind of curious if, the documentation was pretty sparse on this one, so I wasn't sure. They are present in a package, okay. So it's all, everything that's present in the package is what's actually outputted for this guy. This guy is everything that it's been used. I think it's, ac this actually prints out everything, including all the third party dependency symbols that the package is using. Um, Yeah. Okay, so these are all if 
thank you. Because this, I think, um, like I said, folks, I'm trying to make sure that I um, uh, put enough of an example so you guys don't have to really <laughs> go through all the, um, all through the hyperspecs for the common usage. Um, yeah, I was looking for this. Okay, so this was in chapter six. Okay, I missed that. All right, all right. I'll make a note of this, um, note, uh, update, uh, lisp, uh, explanation on, um, symbol verse present symbol versus external symbol. All right. Uh, for those watching, um, we just had a discussion on just the differences between symbol, present symbol, and external symbol, and if you, uh, can't wait for the example, symbol basically tells you what's accessible in a package. Present symbols is what is present in a particular package um, that you're, you're iterating through. And um, external symbols is what's exported by the external interface. Um, so if you look at the as if, um, I mean, the def package, what is ultimately part of its external interface is what, um, what it's returned by external symbol. Do all symbols. Let's try this. Com.rv.utils, and let's see, print sim. Yeah, well, it looks like uh, you're wrong about do all symbols. <laughs> because do all symbols gave me everything that's available in the Lisp image, so. <laughs> uh. Whereas do symbols is actually mapping with them. So there has to be a do present symbols or something. I'll look that up. There's probably equivalent um, versions of this folks for each of the things that I showed you with the loop keyword. Um, but um, loop has it all too as well. <laughs> so honestly, you'll see a lot of um, uh, duplication of this with do, do list and do times. Um, loop provides certain um, additional features that um, just makes certain uh, kinds of operations concise, and that's really when it comes down to accumulating stuff in, in a collection. And we'll, go, we'll show some examples on that. Um, if none of the above, in terms of iterating through hash tables, vectors, iterating through uh, ranges, if none of that actually uh, uh, fits your use case, you can essentially use loop the same way that you similarly, in a similar fashion, that you would use do. So a lot of the examples that I'm about to show, you could certainly do with the do form that we, we've we um, um, previously have explained. Um, but the syntax is more conventional if you're, you know, if you want to write in Al Gaul like fashion inside um, Lisp. Uh, the, form from the for this is really just for each variable equal to some initial form and then you need to specify a um uh, a step form if you're going to for so during the next iteration uh the loop macro knows what to how to step this variable to its ultimate terminal terminating condition uh one thing to note a couple things actually to note one is is each for clause is evaluated separately in the order that it appears. That means that um, the variable that you, um, if you have a certain sequence where variables are dependent upon each other, um, the next variable will take, will use the updated previous variable if they're dependent on each other. So for an example here, I have created a function that computes the power of two. And the way this does it is it repeats n plus one times, and what it collects is is it um, it starts x out has zero, and then gets the next the previous version of y has the next iteration. So if you print this guy out, like if we print the first ten powers of two, you'll see that what happens is is x gets one, it's zero plus one, the uh, and then y will take 1, and x has been updated already to 1, so it becomes 2. And then on uh, the second iteration, x becomes 2, and y does 2 plus 2. 
in order to actually um, print out four and it'll keep going like this and this is why it gets into the powers of two. If you see, um, if you don't want that, where, you know, if you want it to, the step variable to sort of take the previous values, what you'd want to use is, is the AND clause after the first four. And what I mean by that is, is you declare the first variable with a four, okay? And then any subsequent variables that you're doing, you're declaring, use AND to actually declare it and then do a, de a DEN for the step, um, the step uh, clause that needs to be executed for that particular variable. So if you look in this example here that computes the first n Fibonacci numbers, um, x starts with 0 and then gets the previous value of y, and then y starts with 1, and then what it does is it takes the previous value of x and then uses that to compute its current value. So when we run compute FIBO sequence for the first let me clear up this so you guys can actually see what happens when you compute the first. Oops, forgot to compile this guy. Sorry. When we when we print out the first um, ten of these, you see that what it did is it took the previous value of x and then computed its current value. So this is why you can actually go ahead and um, and this, honestly, this, this, this for and fashion here is how do actually would um, execute um, makes code. Except loops does certain, certain operations behind the scenes to actually um, update um, each of the individual variables. Okay. Um, does um, the equal then construction make sense for folks? Like, I know... Um, I'm I'm going pretty fast there, but um, there are there any questions on that? Okay, as Michael Fiano alluded to earlier, um, loop not only uh, gives you you know basic iteration constructs, but it can also destruct a particular um, collection based on a. Uh, a pattern. This is similar to the destructuring bind uh, macro that we saw we saw um, previously. So, like in this example here, uh, if we if when you run it, um, you'll see that uh, what it does is is it takes a and b, binds one to a and two to b, and since um, c doesn't exist in, do um, okay, you have a question? Oh, okay. Um, since C is uh, doesn't exist in this collection, it just you know <laughs> it, it binds it to the symbol C, and then it returns um, uh, a list um, of of all the variables. It's a very simple example, um, but you know, like for example, if we go ahead and, and destructure the destructuring, if we change this to three, you'll see that this guy will obviously bind three to C and return a list. In the same fashion, loop has the ability to take in a pattern and a collection of, let's say, said pattern, and then destruct it each time. So in this example here, what it is I created a list of pairs. You could think of this the same way as like, you know, like a, uh, this could also be a property list using the same, you know, um, destructuring bind um, example for destructuring through a property list. Um, and it'll iterate through that and be able to print out um, each of the individual um, values as if they were flattened and they were using as a simple list. Additionally, you can actually take a list structure, like the simple list structure that we created earlier, which is the first of um, the 10 integers, and you can also destructure that into a set of cons pairs and uh, you can use that to do things like, you know, create comma separated values. So like, um, this is an example uh, that uh, Peter had um, in his book. Um, it, it was originally written um, in the same way. Uh, I don't think I have. I think it was on a simple list. No, 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 it was in. I keep forgetting that. It was in a simple list. Um, uh, 
do format t tilde a item then when consider on item you can actually do format t if you run this wait oops I was wrong I was right it was on this you'll see that it can actually go through and iterate through um, that list as well uh, let's see accumulation yeah. sorry give me a second here interesting okay I will I'll take your word for it <laughs> I've I've never honestly used um, uh, I tried to do the destruction before I pass it into loop and you al almost always ended up using loop for simple things <laughs> over collections um, this uh, destructuring thing is uh, yeah Okay. I thought the optional keyword in destructuring line allows you to provide a default value for uh, for uh, particular. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. You can't. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, so let me see if I could do... You're saying that if I change this guy to use... What's it? I... I don't think this will work. Okay. Well, I don't know if this will work uh, if I get rid of the dot. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Uh, let's do this. I don't think this will, this would be interesting if it did work, actually. And it did work. Wow. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Right. Okay. So you're saying that in, in the destructuring form itself, you have to specify um, uh, ignore here. You'd have to do a declare ignore. Okay, gotcha. All right, all right. We should actually. Um, this certainly sounds like an advanced topic that I think um, requires a a a. a a, a different like quick talk on the differences just to show off some examples um i will i'll make a note of it to talk to you uh, after 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 today's session to get more details as to some of those examples because i've never actually to be honest encountered those in the wild so um it's probably commonly used in some code bases but not the ones that i've seen um so let's talk about accumulation Accumulation, honestly, is probably one of the more powerful pieces of the loop macro that I can't think of any language providing 
Um, you have to still manually add, since we have Lambda, like you could do something similar with list expressions inside Python, but even there, um, that's calling out to an external function that you've created yourself. Uh, this is, in, in, like I said, baked into the loop mini language. Uh, it provides, for most common looping idi idioms, a good way of uh, accumulating values. What are, um, it can return uh, the value of the accumulation, that is, it creates a default value and returns it, or you can do what's called a, create a local variable, and I'll show you how to do that um, using the into subclause, and then write a finally uh, uh, statement that will um, exit out and returns from using the return keyword. Uh, there are two types that are defined by the mini language. If you actually look at the hyperspect, this is how they define it in the in the BNF grammar. And those are numerical accumulation, which uh, includes uh, summing, some sort of summing function, uh, some sort of counting function, a maximum to find a maximum of a given set or uh, getting a minimum of a given set. And you have also things like loop list accumulation too as well. Uh, and those are including things like, you know, collecting items and building up a list. Uh, appending an nconc, which is the destructive concatenation operator, uh, those guys uh, expect the item that you're, you know, appending to or whatever is a given list. And it's a common way of actually being able to like flatten a list. So for example here, for uh, looping, I made a simple range example. This is, you know, what you normally probably see in uh, things like Python that will uh, do, uh, you know, just creating a list of collections. So in Python's case, it would be a half open interval that it will be, will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 instead of um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can also use uh, nconc, and here's an example of nconc, where you could uh, take a list of lists and flatten it. Uh, this is different, by the way, for those of you who've, um, who look at this and say, well, this doesn't look like uh, the flatten function that's used in, say, uh, uh, onLisp. Uh, that's because I didn't write it recursively. I'm using loop directly. Uh, onLisp does it recursively, to, uh, and it's a much more generic function than this one. Like this. I think that I think the Alexandria flatten function came directly from onLisp. I was reading somewhere that either they added certain things or they extended the one that was provided in the onLisp um, code that does uh, flattening too. Uh, that's why I'm I'm only mentioning it for folks who are looking at this or are questioning why there aren't all these different cases. I didn't. I'm doing this purely for illustration purposes. Um, and as you can see here. Uh, it takes the item, the first item, which is one, two, and starts essentially uh, modifying it with the kidder and uh, has it iterating through each of the items in the collection and then concatenating them together. You can also do this, which is, I don't recommend, if you're doing end concatenation of the list of lists, this is, I think, this version that I highlighted is probably faster than this version of creating an extra item. Um, and then doing a finally, but I've honestly have not uh, done uh, any um, timing metrics on this for larger lists, which is where you would probably see uh, some, of the, some of the slowdown. For a final example for numerical aggregation, I thought I'd show you a, a sort of a makeshift thing of taking statistics of a distribution, like a, a list, of, um, list of numbers. Um, so I created a function called print report, which essentially grabs um, what's returned from that takes in a list and a corresponding statistics function. And it calls a statistics function on the list, expecting it to return as multiple values, the size of the list, the sum, the minimum, and the maximum. And what I did is that I wrote, um, did I compile? Yeah, I compiled it. So I wrote two different versions of this list. The first version basically uses something called auxiliary variables. Um, you'll see here that I have essentially named, I named it the, um, the, the loop. Um, I initialized an item in the list, so I'm iterating through each item in the list. 
um, I have two auxiliary variables, one called minimum value that's defined to the first value in the list, and the second one is the maximum value. So essentially this is going to do, there's an aggreg a built-in aggregate function that, um, that does this in loop, but I'm just showing the auxiliary values for the sake of example. Um, you can of course then, you know, run every form in sequence with the do. So here I'm essentially uh, figuring out what the minimum value is, figuring out what the maximum value is here. And then at the same time, uh, loop allows me to also count the number of items that are, um, that are in the collection and um, sums them too. Now, in other languages, you may have had to write um, separate loops for each of them. Um, obviously, it will still be linear time because you're actually, you know, uh, going through separate for loops. But it is going to be, um, uh, it's going to look like you're doing three different for loops over the same collection. And in common lisp here, notice it's, uh, it looks like you're doing it in a single form and behind the scenes, whatever's being optimized at compile time, that's, that's entirely up to the discretion of the common lisp implementer of how to optimize this loop for counting items in the list and summing them. Finally, uh, I have an example for that and I want to show you why this, when I did that with this, yeah, it requires multiple views. I didn't do it that way for, 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 this, for, this, for this example, um, but I do have an example for that. Um, so, but in here, we're returning here, we can, we can do, um, we'll return the, the final things. We could certainly actually do what, um, uh, Mike, you were suggesting, Michael Piano, like if we do this, um, right, we can, oops, we could do a do, and then we could do an end. This incorporates an additional keyword here. Um, so, yeah, because you it will it will come it will um, it will. I'm trying to separate um, two cases here, right? So I would have to do an when here, and yeah. Um, yeah, then I can use an if else. That's why I, I can also use an if else for that too as well. But I'm doing I'm doing this separately just to illustrate that there were there were two different um, two different things. So this code here would map to a maximize item into maximum value as you see here. Sorry. Yeah. And this code will essentially map to minimizing here in this example. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> yeah it's it's it, it there's 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 certainly other ways of doing this too as well um but um the the run stats function the nice thing about this now is is um print report I can pass in let's say um, let's just create a, a dummy data set, okay? Uh, and again, this is really, when I type this, I sometimes don't type in the, the keywords here, but for sake of example, I'll go ahead and show this for folks who are watching. Uh, do random, this will create a quick random distribution between zero and 10,000, all right? This is our data set. Okay, what? wait, did I type it in wrong? Oh, right, I'm an idiot. Um, not collect. So this is our data set. Okay, it's a pretty big, pretty big distribution. In fact, I will probably go ahead and shrink this guy to something else. Um, uh, let's make the sample uh, 10. All right. Just so that we can actually fit it in our buffer. 
All right. Pretty pretty small data set. We're going to find the minimum, maximum, sum it all together, and then and then print it out. All right. So if we run this print report on our data set with our run stats function, you'll see that we got um, this is our, our print. We'll get the collection size, obviously. What is the summation, the minimum value? We can see that it's 254. And the maximum value, we can see that it's uh, uh, 9849. The same thing can be done the other way. These are exactly equivalent, right? Same results. But as Michael pointed out, and what I was trying to illustrate here, those of you who are um, on, the, on the chat, um, which one do you prefer is the question. This one or this one, or the, the loop run stats implementation. I personally prefer the second one. <laughs> because it's already built in. Um, obviously, if there are cases where um, you don't, um, you, uh, you want to use these conditional execution keywords, um, one example that I thought of was, let's say that I was given, you know, an unsorted list for, the, for for this example, I'm not I'm not going to create an unsorted list, um, but um, I can. But let's say that I wanted to uh, essentially, given an unsorted list, um, uh, print some values. I want to print out uh, the summation of all even numbers and all uh, all um, uh, all odd numbers in two different values, right? So one way of doing this is obviously um, for i in list, we can do if even p i, we could sum i into even sum else. We could sum i into odd sum. And we could return values, even sum, odd sum. This is a very quick way of actually implementing a, uh, a thing that will split the list as it's iterating through. And it will um, obviously uh, check to see if, uh, if it's even, it will go into one bucket. Otherwise, it will go into the other bucket. And then um, the sum keyword obviously, obviously just you know, sum, sums it and creates a a, a, a simple a simple sum. So I'm not printing out partial sums here. I could also do that by creating a separate if if sequence because I realize that I can't do a do and an if in the same same thing. That's kind of uh, weird, but you know. <laughs> Let's now take our data set and create a set of things between zero and ten to make it easier, and we see that. Um, that we have 12, 0, 4, 16, 24. 24 is our even, and um, uh, 5, 5, 10, 1, 11, 12. 12 is our odd, odd sum, roughly. I might, I'm, my mental math might be <laughs> a little off there, but if we pass this in to print some values, it'll do it for me. <laughs> you see, our even sum is 24, our odd sum is 15. Oh, right, I forgot I missed uh, the three there. And you can write the code like this. Do I think that this is cleaner than, you know, just writing a do, a do list? Probably not. Let's see how it would look like in the do list. Uh, you can do it the same way. You would have an even sum here and an odd sum there. Personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even do that. I would probably just write two different reduces and then print out the redu reduction. Um, so I would do, uh, we could do a reduce, I think, uh, where was a test value? Plus sequence. I'd have to do a filter first. 
yeah, I would have to filter first, grab, I would have to grab all the even numbers and then um, do a reduction on those two. Yeah, I just realized that. Um, I was thinking of closure for a minute there. I, I, I just, <laughs> I, I'm now like mixing closure with common less, but I do apologize for that. <laughs> there is a, there's a way of actually, it's a find. That's what I was thinking of, find if. Um, um, find if predicate even p and data set. Um, and I'd have to collect, I'd have to loop through, um, if not, oh, uh, thank you, that's what I was saying. Remove if not uh, even. Yeah, and then I could do this. Reduce hash boom. And I could have, I could simply also in a function, in a different way of doing that, I could just do this. Defun another sum values on the A list. Do this. Reduce values. Reduce. Not even p on a list, and then reduce hashtag um, and this will do the same thing if we run another some things. So for folks who are seeing this, right, in terms of code, I think this is much more cleaner, it's much more concise and much more to the point than writing, say, this. But obviously, this is, the loop macro provides you more versatility in terms of running certain sequences. Um, obviously, if you want to do that with the reduction, you have to add a, uh, an anonymous function and then uh, deal with certain edge cases and at that point you may as well go ahead and implement it using loop because it'll become a little unwieldy. Don't try to <laughs> don't try to jam something into something that it doesn't it's not useful to doing in that case. Um, so creating a new function, make it simpler, do it te testable and then if you want to use loop you can go ahead and use the loop. One thing I do want to illustrate here, we talked about conditional execution, we talked about unconditional execution, which is the do form and the return and return return from. Return from is what we, we shown here, where we specified a label in the, the loop, saying that we're returning from that label, and um, uh, we provide a certain set of values as, uh, with the, back to the return from of the, um, of the function. Uh, but one thing I didn't touch base on is um, what uh, the book and what the hyperspec calls are terminating conditions. We see a little bit of it here with, um, with finally, but there's also um, other like uh, types, like for example, one is, uh, actually we missed one thing, which is uh, while. You can also, in the loop keyword, use something like while, while something is work, um, doing, uh, so, so instead of, you know, for example, providing a stopping condition, you can also use while, and this will know when this condition is no longer true, um, it will execute this piece of code. So in this example, it's, uh, it'll just keep incrementing until it hits a stopping condition which is while. Uh, you can also use always and until. There's a few other ones that are there too, like, uh, what's it? Um, there is and never. And, but honestly, while is probably the only one that I've used. Um, you can also do like uh, until um, i equals 11. You can also do that. That's another example. The other ones, I'm not entirely sure when they would be useful. Like, Michael Fiano, have you ever used uh, always? Um, 
always or never or whatever. So, okay. Interesting. Okay. Which one is that? Oh, I did touch base on it. I had an example of it uh, here, which is, where is it? Ah, it was in my run stats function. Yeah. So width is definitely a useful thing for intermediate for intermediate values. You're absolutely right. And I think um, But one question I had is there's an additional thing called initially. Okay. Yeah, and I know it's the opposite of finally, but I could never find an example for doing setup using initially. I couldn't find a decent example at least because there are cases where I, I, I well, I haven't actually seen initially used. Almost any case where I think initially would be used, they're using for and with. So, uh, do you? And the hyperspec honestly mentions it, but I didn't see an example in the hyperspec for initially, which is, I was like, okay, is this a keyword that, um, and this is a homework assignment for anybody who can tell me, honestly, those of you who are watching, please tweet to me. I am Unix nerd on Twitter. I would love to know of an example, um, of, uh, of using it initially inside loop. That's, that's, that's right. And that's it. So my, my quite that, that's precisely my point too. Like you have four iteration things. Yeah, that's maybe, but I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with an example. <laughs> it's not too common. There are certain things that are not common in common lists. <laughs> um, but folks who have seen it in the wild, I would, I would, it, it is a great educational um, exercise. I just could not come up with an example where you couldn't do the same thing using for and with keywords. So if you, if it's like setting up a database connection or, or doing something like that, 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 that certainly would be um, something I'm used to be interested in showing, showing off and please let me know. Um, but I have not seen any real world example of it using at least in recent code bases. Finally, I almost see all the time and especially for stopping conditions and you're trying to do collections like this. It's, it's, I've seen it in more than one occasion. It's used also in, um, in, in PCL. Excellent. <laughs> That's from the hyperspec, right? I saw that too in the hyperspec. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. <laughs> it's still probably available and you probably can get it um, uh, at your at your local bookstore if you actually look around um, but we're um, actually hitting up on time here and I think I covered it all um, there isn't uh, anything much else in in terms of loop uh, the hardest thing for folks <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we did talk about append um, only in passing, but I can show the same example of, um, of append. So like in this flattened list example, instead of using n concatenate, I can certainly use append, and it's the same result, actually. Um, so if we do flatten list um, on 1, 2, 3, 4, you will get 1, 2, 3, 4. And the difference, honestly, I'm, I'm not entirely certain 
in terms of implementation, but I'm sure it might be an optimization behind the scenes as to whether a pen gives you better results or end concatenation if you're doing lists of lists like this. Um, I can't tell which one would be better. Uh, I would have to do some more performance testing to see which one would be better. And for folks who are listening in, uh, whatever performance test I come up with will be specific to SBCL and probably the version that I'm, I'm writing on because often if there are like performance issues, they improve it over time between different releases and it will be different between different lists too as well. So um, you would have to bear that in mind with whatever reports I'd probably um, replace. It would be an interesting exercise to, you know, time it out to see what the different lists do provide um, to give you some, some sort of indication as to which list would be better for doing some of this kind of stuff. But uh, I would argue that um, loop is still very limiting in that it doesn't allow you to extend it. So in almost all cases, <laughs> I would probably recommend using like uh, some of the newer iteration libraries. Um, loop is definitely optimized though. Like you will run really fast uh, compared to uh, you write using other other iteration iteration constructs just because it's built into the language and a lot of the implementers go out of their way to make it really really efficient um, and the same thing goes with any of the generic iteration constructs whether it be do do list do times do symbols whatever um, they'll be fairly efficient on the common list build implementation that you are leveraging but in terms of maintainability and user extensibility those are two things. Loop is probably the most restrictive of them all. Um, it gives you a lot, of, a lot of cool things and you can certainly add functions that could run in sequence using do, but if you're asking to extend the language so you can add a new keyword to loop, that's not possible. Um, there are other um, libraries that give you that, that feature. Uh, any other comments from folks? I will try and do an iterate talk. That's what I'm, that is my, my goal to do an iterate talk because I think, oh, well, what do you suggest? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me ask you that. Like, because oh, that's a, that's a, this is an interesting discussion. Let's, let's talk about this for a minute. Because... Okay, well, I'd have to go, let me, I mean, I've only heard a lot of folks talk about iterate. Okay, go ahead, that would be excellent. One thing I will point out to folks, especially, oh, Shinmera, okay, I should have, I should have just gone to his GitHub because I have his bookmark. Um, for folks who are actually um, listening in, um, one thing I will point out, and this is definitely, echoing Michael Piano's um, suggestion, um, at least for a lot of the common cases where you're iterating through collections, specifically um, uh, lists and vectors, and more importantly, you do not need random access iteration. And what I mean by that is you do not have to specify a step size. Uh, it's probably better just to go ahead and use the map function map uh, any of the map functions whether it be map map hash map con map that those will be fairly fast and those will be fairly accurate to doing um your job and being they're very declarative so it makes the code explicitly um uh clear in terms of what you're trying to do if you need random access iteration and um with a some sort of step size um i would say if uh, do list and do times don't work for you, then um, try using loop uh, for those for those cases. But for all the other ones, the map library actually hits a lot of the same use cases and they do it fairly efficiently as far as I can tell. I, I've never seen a case where map is slower than um, any of the other do's. And in those cases, 
I would say that do would probably be the easiest one to just go ahead and adjust for your particular use case or even use um, two times your do list. But that's my recommendation. Um, uh, I don't know what other folks would tell you, but that's my recommendation. Um, but until next time, guys, I mean, honestly, this is, th I know that this has been fairly overwhelming, especially for folks who haven't touched the loop language. And more importantly, I know I've given a lot of examples that you're like, well, two things look exactly the same. Which one would be preferable than the other? Really, it goes down to, can you read it? Can you understand it? And if you can understand it, can other people understand it on your team? And if they can understand it, just stay consistent. Use the same exact subset of the, <laughs> of the keywords in that mini language. And as long as you're consistent, Loop will do almost exactly what you want. And I hear snickering in the background, but you know, it's, <laughs> this, is, this is honestly my take home message for folks <laughs> on Loop. It is complicated, but really a lot of that boils down to duplicate keywords doing the same thing, not really the, the, the language itself. It's a fairly simple language. Any final comments from folks? Michael? Cool, man. Uh, well, until next time, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, I'll try and see if I can get an example of Shinmera's 4 um, going just so that I can play around with it because there are a couple of cases where it will be useful um, that I can think of right now. Um, but until next time, uh, peace out. Thanks for, for joining us, and um, we'll, see you, we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye, guys.